Assalamu alaikum and welcome everyone to the second part of Molecular Biology 3 Preparation Series, Molecular Techniques. I'm Dr. Lai Abdul Ati and I'm really excited to share my knowledge and experiences with all of you through this series. So, let's dive in together. Alright, in our previous lecture, we started in the second section of Molecular Techniques, Manipulation of RNA and DNA. Today, we'll move on to the restriction of fragments, length polymorphism. Alright? Okay, this molecular techniques part makes up uh, 30 to 35 percent of the total molecular biology ACB exams. So now let's focus on the question related to the restriction fragment length polymorphism. Review molecular biology ACB questions from the previous exams. So the first question we have today: What is the primary purpose of using restriction fragment length polymorphism in molecular biology? As we know, RFLP is a technique used to identify variation in homologous DNA sequences by detecting different lengths of restriction enzyme digested DNA fragments. All right. So the correct answer here is to detect variation in DNA sequences. All right. Let's move on. All right. The next question: Which of the following enzymes is the crucial for the RFLP techniques? The correct answer is restriction in the nucleases. All right. These restriction in the nucleases are enzymes that cut DNA at specific sequences, producing fragments of varying lengths. All right. So these fragments can then be separated and analyzed to detect the polymorphism. All right. Let's move on. All right. The next question we have today: Which type of plotting technique? is commonly used to transfer DNA fragments from a gel to a membrane in RFLP analysis. The correct answer is thousand plotting. Thousand plotting is the method used to transfer DNA fragments from agarose gel onto membrane all right so this allows for the detection of specific dna sequences using labeled props all right let's move on all right in rflp analysis what is the rule of a dna prop Actually, DNA props are used to hybridize with the specific DNA sequences on a membrane, all right, allowing for detection of particular fragments in thousand plotting. So the correct answer here is to hybridize with the specific DNA sequences. All right, let's move on. Which of the following is not typically application of RFLP? The correct answer is protein sequencing. As we know, RFLP is used for genetic fingerprinting, paternity testing, and diagnosing hereditary disease, but not used for protein sequencing. All right, let's move on. Okay, next question. How are the sizes of DNA fragments determined in RFLP analysis? The correct answer is by using a DNA ladder during gel electrophoresis. As we know, a DNA ladder which contains fragments of known sizes is used during the gel electrophoresis to determine the size of DNA fragments. All right, let's move on. Let's see the question here. What is the significance of detecting different fragment lengths in RFLP analysis?
All right, the correct answer, it indicates the presence of mutations, all right? Uh, actually, different fragment lengths in RFLP indicate the presence of mutations or polymorphism in the DNA sequence, all right? Let's move on. All right, what is the key advantage of using RFLP over other genetic analysis techniques? RFLB is particularly useful for what? Useful for detecting large-scale genetic variations, such as insertion, deletion, and rearrangements, which may, may not be easily detected by other techniques like BCR and so on. All right, let's move on. All right, which of the following factors can affect the accuracy of RFLB analysis? Actually, the accuracy of RFLP analysis can be influenced by several factors, all right? including the purity of DNA sample, the concentration of agarose in the gel, and the temperature during hybridization. So, each of these factors can impact the resolution and detection of DNA fragments. If you found this content helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe your support means the world to me and help me create more valuable content for you. Thank you for being part of this journey. Let's continue. Let's see the question here. Which of the following is the limitation of, of RFLP analysis? One limitation of RFLP analysis is that it requires relatively large amounts of high quality DNA for accurate results, right? Which condition can be diagnosed using RFLP? The correct answer is sickle cell anemia, all right? The other conditions are not typically diagnosed via RFLP. Let's see the next question. A mutation in a restriction enzyme recognition size will result in All right, the correct answer is longer or shorter fragments depending on the mutation. But let me explain it to you quickly. Actually, a mutation in the restriction enzyme recognition size can lead to either, first one, loss of restriction sites. That means the enzyme can no longer cut at the location, resulting in a longer DNA fragments. Or the second one, creation of a new restriction site. That means the enzyme now cuts in the additional location leading to a shorter DNA fragment. Okay, I hope it's clear now. Let's move on. Okay, let's see the question here. Compared to BCR, RFLP generally requires... All right, the correct answer is more DNA. Actually, RFLP requires more DNA because it doesn't amplify the target sequence like BCR does, okay? Instead, it relies on the restriction enzyme digestion followed by gel electrophoresis and thousand plotting, which typically require microgram quantities of high-quality DNA. In contrast, BCR amplifies specific DNA regions allowing the detection of mutation or polymorphism using only a nanogram amount of DNA. All right, let's move on. Okay, next question here. The purpose of southern plotting in RFLP is to...
The correct answer is transfer DNA to a membrane for hybridization. All right, let's move on. All right, let's see the question here. Variable number tandem repeats are useful in RFLP because they All right, the correct answer is have variable links due to repeat numbers, all right? But let me uh, give you some information about the variable number tandem repeats. This variable number tandem repeats are short DNA sequences located in non-coding regions of the genome where they are repeated in tandem. You see, repeated in tandem, all right? The number of repeats can vary between individuals. And this variation leads to difference in the restriction fragments lengths. So when DNA is digested with the restriction enzymes, the fragment size change based on the number of repeats at a specific locus. This variability make variable number tandem repeats highly useful for genetic fingerprinting, forensic analysis, and paternity testing. All right. All right, let's see the next question here. A homozygous individual for RFLP marker will show one band on the gel, two bands, three bands, or no bands. Actually, a homozygous individuals for RFLP marker will show only one band on a gel. Because what? Because both alleles at the locus are the same, right? Resulting in a single fragment size. In contrast, a heterozygous individuals has the two different alleles, which lead to two bands due to the different fragment sizes produced by the two alleles. All right? Let's see the question here. RFLP can detect which type of mutation? Actually, RFLP can detect missense mutation that alters restriction enzyme recognition sites. So, this type of mutation changes nucleotides in the recognition sequence, which either creates or destroys a restriction site, resulting in a change in the fragment lengths when the DNA is digested with the restriction enzymes. All right. On the other hand, silent mutations or uh, frame shift mutations typically do not alter restriction sites and therefore do not affect fragment lengths detected by RFLP. All right. So the correct answer here is missense mutation altering a restriction site. All right. Let's see the question here. If a mutation creates a new restriction site, the number of fragments will The correct answer is increase. Actually, additional restriction sites result in more fragments. All right, let's move on. All right, which step in RFLP is most time consuming? All right, the most time consuming step in RFLP is typically southern plotting, all right? This step involves transferring DNA fragments from a gel to a membrane through the capillary transfer, which often takes overnight, you can imagine. While DNA digestion and gel electrophoresis step take only several hours. And hybridization requires additional time so the southern plotting step is the most lopper intensive and time consuming. Let's move on. All right, let's see the last question we have today. In a family study, a child shows DNA fragments of 2KB and 4KB. The father had the fragments of 2KB and 4KB, while the mother has fragments of 4KB and 6KB. So the child's genotype is
All right, the correct answer is heterozygous genotype. 2KB uh, for KB. Result from inheriting one allele from each parent. Let me explain it. Actually, the father has 2KB and 4KB fragments, right? Meaning he can pass down the either 2KB or 4KB allele. The mother has 4KB and 6KB fragments, so she can pass down either 4KB or 6KB allele. Since the child had uh, 2KB and 4KB, they must have inherited 2KB from the father and 4KB from mother. All right, confirming a heterozygous 2KB, 4KB genotype. All right, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the lectures. Please don't forget to like, comment if you have any questions, share and subscribe to our channel to receive all the latest lectures. I also encourage everyone taking the test to share your questions with us so that everyone can benefit. Salam.